Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're uh, really cutting through the noise for you. Yeah, getting straight to the good stuff. Exactly. We're digging into the essential insights from a, well, a really key conference on educational technology and teaching methods. Mm -hmm. Our mission here is to unpack the most important nuggets of knowledge, maybe some surprising bits too, from all the recaps, action items, presentation summaries we've got. Right. So whether you're prepping for a meeting, just need to catch up on the field, or you're you know, just really curious, we want to give you those practical takeaways, things you can actually use. Absolutely. And this isn't just a surface level summary. We're aiming for a deep, but uh, still totally digestible overview of some cutting edge ideas. Connecting the dots. Exactly. Connecting things that might seem separate and really highlighting what matters most in, well, this always evolving landscape of education. Okay, so let's kick things off with something pretty widespread. Foreign language classroom anxiety, FLCA. Ah, yes. Big topic. It really is. It affects so many learners and uh, finding good strategies is just crucial. Mm -hmm. Robert's presentation finding their voice, overcoming FLCA, really hit this hard. He talked about student planning, scaffolding. Be careful scaffolding. And yeah. even using AI, which is interesting, to reduce that anxiety. And the big thing was educators creating supportive environments, really fostering that. And he gave some very specific, actionable things teachers can do. That was the great part. Oh, yeah. Like what? Well, things like encouraging pre-task planning. Yeah. You know, letting students prepare beforehand gives them a bit more control. Okay. And incorporating quick mindfulness or uh, relaxation exercises just before class. Simple, but effective for settling nerves. Right. Also mm -hmm. giving students options and choices that accommodates different anxiety levels and using pair work that definitely lowers the stress for individuals. Yeah, safety in numbers. Sort of. Kind of. Yeah. And he mentioned this traffic light trainer idea. Yeah. Yeah, where students might start with full notes, that's the red light, then move to partial notes, yellow, and then ideally speak more freely, green. It's about gradually reducing support. Building confidence step by step. Exactly. But the bit that really jumped out, I think, was exploring AI chatbots as preparation tools. How so? Well, imagine students practicing speaking with an AI. They get instant feedback, but it's non-judgmental, you know, a totally low stakes way to practice. Ah, like a rehearsal without the audience pressure. Precisely. It mimics conversation, but without the fear factor. That could be a huge game changer for reducing anxiety before they even get into the classroom situation. Wow. Oh. I remember in the breakout room for that session, pretty much everyone had an FLCA story. It just showed how common this really is. That's a fantastic toolkit. Mm -hmm. Really practical. And, you know, speaking of calming nerves, that leads nicely into Maria's presentation on mindfulness. <gasps> Yes, mindfulness and education. She covered the benefits of stress reduction, better concentration, even finding more joy in learning, plus some simple techniques anyone can use. What I found really compelling was the research she mentioned about the uh, positive effects mindfulness actually has on the brain. Oh, the neuroscience bit. Yeah. She pointed out how consistent practice can literally reshape neural pathways, particularly in the prefrontal cortex that's your executive function hub. Attention, decision making. Okay. And at the same time, it can calm activity in the amygdala, your fear center. So there's actual science backing it up. Right. It's not just a nice idea. It demonstrably changes brain function. And for anyone wanting to go deeper, she mentioned some upcoming mindfulness courses too. Interesting. So mindfulness helps create that calm focus. But what about the absolute fundamentals, like reading? Crucial. Neve Torissi has some really powerful insights on just how vital reading is. Mm. Not just the cognitive benefits, but emotional, cultural. Mm. It's foundational. Yeah, Knives made a really important point about, you know, reading in our digital age. The screen versus paper debate. Sort of, but more nuanced. She advocated for a balanced approach. Recognizing the value of digital, sure, but also stressing that tactile engagement with physical books. That still matters. Mm. And she talked about teachers being reading facilitators, not just teaching the mechanics, but creating an environment, a culture that fosters a real love for reading. So curating good stuff, modeling it. Exactly. Making space for discussion. And she also really highlighted reading in different languages, not just for the language skills, but for genuine cultural understanding, empathy. That's a great point. Yeah. And her session had this interactive Mentimeter poll about reading aloud. It sparked this really um, quite lovely discussion, actually, about just the simple joy of sharing stories that way. Nice. Okay. So we've covered well-being, mindfulness, reading, 
foundational stuff. Mm -hmm. How is technology stepping in to maybe enhance all this? Zainab Musavi's presentation tackled tech in English language learning. Right. And a key framework she discussed was the SAMR model. SAMR substitution. Substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. Yeah. It's a way for educators to think about how they're integrating technology. Are they just swapping tools or actually changing the learning task itself? Okay, bring that down a bit. So substitution is basic, like typing an essay instead of handwriting it. Augmentation adds a functional improvement, maybe using spell check or grammar tools on that typed essay. Still pretty straightforward. Right. But then modification is where tech significantly redesigns the task. Yeah. Maybe using a collaborative online doc where students co-write that essay in real time, giving feedback as they go. Ah, okay. Different process. Exactly. And redefinition. That's where tech allows for completely new tasks that just weren't possible before. Think creating interactive multimedia projects or uh, virtual reality field trips, things like that. Gotcha. Moving beyond enhancement to transformation. Precisely. Zainab shared examples from an EVL 2025 teacher training session showing how teachers could consciously move learners up through those levels. It's about being intentional with the tech. So it's less about the what and more about the how. Makes sense. And Dr. Nelly's session seemed to fit right in there, demonstrating specific AI tools. Yeah, she showed a whole range of tools for making videos and quizzes more interactive. Things like uh, Google's AI, Gemini, for generating content. Then platforms like Edpuzzle. I know, Edpuzzle. Yeah. Embedding questions in videos. Right. And Wayground used to be called Quizzes for those game-like assessments. And Play Paposit, which is also great for interactive video lessons. So how are these tools actually used? What's the benefit? Well, the exciting part is how they can automate things, like generating quiz questions directly from a video's content, or letting teachers easily pinpoint key moments in a video to insert a question, check understanding, make sure students are actively engaging, not just passively watching. So more active learning, potentially more personalized. That's the goal empowering teachers, giving students more ownership. But Nelly also stressed, you know, looking at the pros and cons. Always important. Yeah. Things like data privacy, potential biases in the AI content, and the fact that these tools, their features, their pricing it all changes so fast, you really have to stay on top of it. Good point, constant vigilance. Now taking this tech focus even further, Amber Smith presented something quite ambitious a personalized educator enhancement program. Yeah, visionary is a good word for it. She laid out this detailed roadmap for a purpose built LMS, a learning management system. Okay. It starts by really listening to educators, finding out what they actually need, then curating resources, organizing them effectively. And the end goal is providing instant personalized recommendations right in the system, tailored support. That sounds useful. But you said visionary. Right, because the really big piece she revealed was this global NeuroMesh pilot. NeuroMesh. Sounds like sci-fi. It does a bit. But the idea is using low power edge AI AI that runs locally on devices, not needing constant cloud connection to deliver educational tools and resources to underserved areas globally. So bypassing infrastructure issues. Exactly. Bringing quality learning tools directly to places where internet access or powerful computers might be scarce. It's incredibly ambitious. Wow. And that connects directly to that bigger mission, doesn't it? Universal access to quality education. Absolutely. Amber mentioned being inspired by Montessori methods. Which are great, but often expensive, right? Especially in the U.S. Precisely. And she contrasted that with Italy, where Nides also pointed out they have state-run Montessori schools that are free. Free state-run Montessori. Yes. It sparked this whole conversation about the ideal. Could high-quality education, like Montessori, actually be universally free? Italy's system was held up as, well, maybe a model for what's possible. A powerful idea. So in this whole mix of innovation, how do we blend the new tech with um, existing wisdom or different ways of knowing? That's a great question. And it leads nicely into exploring digital storytelling. Anitha's presentation looked at how fantasy narratives, like on YouTube, do more than just entertain. Right, she talked about community building. Yeah, through computer-mediated communication, how these platforms facilitate interaction. And she really dug into the dynamics. The role of AI is growing there, too. Not just in making content, but even shaping plots or viewer experiences. Interesting. It's blurring the lines between creators and viewers. Audiences often actively shape where the story goes. She used examples like Epic NPC Man and The Guild. Oh yeah, I know The Guild. Right, to show how these really engaging community-driven stories have huge educational potential 
teaching collaboration, problem solving, even history maybe, through that immersive narrative. Makes sense, using engagement for learning. Definitely. And funnily enough, her own live stream had some technical glitches during the talk. <laughs> the irony. It kind of underscored the real world challenges of relying on these digital platforms, you know. True. Okay, so blending modern media with narrative. Mm -hmm. That yeah. brings us to Dr. Parvesh's talk, which sounded fascinating. Integrating Indian Knowledge Systems, IKS, with digital pedagogy in technical education. It was incredibly powerful. He showed how ancient Indian wisdom, especially from things like the Panchatantra stories. The animal fables. Yeah, but they're much more than just fables. They illustrate complex ethical decision-making, critical thinking, teamwork, skills that are directly relevant today. How so in technical fields? Think about AI ethics, cybersecurity challenges, hmm. collaborative engineering projects, the principles in these ancient stories offer frameworks for navigating those modern complexities. Oh, yeah. And Dr. Parvesh suggested practical ways faculty could use this, maybe AI tools to generate IKS-based case studies for specific technical topics, or VRR simulations immersing students in historical context to understand, say, ancient engineering principles. That's a really creative blend. It is. It promotes this holistic approach, not just technical skills, but cultural appreciation, ethical grounding, societal responsibility. Proving ancient wisdom is still incredibly relevant. This has been, well, an absolutely packed deep dive. So many different angles on educational innovation. Definitely a lot to process. But the conversation doesn't have to end here, right? There are ways for listeners, for you, to get more involved. Absolutely. For English teachers, Zainab and Rose are running an updated EVO online training session in 2026. They'll have new tools, focus on AI and immersive learning, more practical examples. That's a no. And if you're interested in maybe moderating an EVO session yourself, there's support for that. Proposals are due August 31st. Okay. Then there's a five-week professional development program in October for those accepted. General registration for the actual sessions opens December 7th. And the sessions run when? January 11th to February 15th, 2026. Yeah. And they wrap up with a Best of EVO 2026 celebration in March. Got it. And wasn't there another conference mentioned? MFVC 26. Yes. Mark your calendars for August 1st, 2026. It's just a one-day online event this time. The timing's been adjusted to make it easier to attend. Okay, good tip. Yep. Anything else ongoing? A few things. You could join the Culture Club or the Edgeling Speak Project in 2026. Maybe think about publishing your own insights in the University of Grapevine newsletter sharing the knowledge. Right. And you can continue the chat about anxiety and AI with Robert uh, via Facebook or LinkedIn. And there was even talk of a potential research collaboration between Dr. Nelly and Anitha. On VR and digital storytelling. Yeah, that could be really fascinating to watch develop. Wow. Okay. What an incredible range we've covered from student well-being, tackling anxiety, core skills like reading, then all the text MR, AI tools, personalized LMS, the neural mesh idea. They're blending that with digital storytelling and ancient wisdom. It's really been a journey. I feel like this deep dive genuinely gives you that shortcut to being properly informed on these really critical topics. So stepping back from all these specifics, thinking about the sheer variety of innovations we've touched on, mindfulness, AI personalization, IKS integration, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Wonder what? How might all these insights taken together fundamentally reshape the design of our future education systems. Not just tweaking things, but really creating transformative learning environments for everyone. That is a really big question. Something powerful for you, the listener, to think about. Mm -hmm. We definitely encourage you to reflect on that and maybe continue your own deep dive. Keep exploring. Until next time.